In the last video, I drew this grid in order to understand better the different combinations of alleles I could get from my mom or my dad. And this grid that I drew is called a Punnett square. Punnett, Punnett square. And I looked up what Punnett means, and it turns out, and this, this might be the biggest takeaway from this video, that when you go to the, the farmer's market or you go to the produce and you, you see those little baskets, you see those little baskets that uh, often you'll see maybe strawberries or blueberries sitting in. They have this little grid here, right there. Sometimes grapes are in them, and you, you have a bunch of strawberries in them, like that. That green basket is a punnet. That's a punnet. Apparently, in some countries, they call it a punnet. I think England's one of them, and, and you, 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 you uh, UK viewers can correct me if I'm wrong. And so I guess that's where the inspiration comes from for calling these punnet squares. That these are kind of these little green baskets that you can throw different combinations of genotypes in. And these punnet squares aren't just useful if you're talking about uh, crossing two hybrids. This is called a monohybrid cross because you're crossing two hybrids for only one trait. It could be useful for a whole set of different types of uh, uh, crosses between uh, two, two, uh, two reproducing organisms. And it doesn't even have to be a situation where, where one thing is dominating another. Let's, let's do a bunch of these just to make you uh, familiar with the idea. So let's say you have a mom. So instead of doing two hybrids, let's do, let's say, the mom. I'll keep using the blue-eyed, brown-eyed analogy uh, just because we're already reasonably used useful to it. Let's say that she's homozygous dominant. And let's say that the dad the dad is is a, is a heterozygote. So he's got a brown and he's got a blue. And we want to know the different combinations of genotypes that one of their children might have. So what we do is we draw a Punnett square again. So let me draw a grid here. Draw a grid. Right there, and up here we'll write the different genes that mom can contribute, and here we'll write the different genes that dad can contribute, or the different alleles. I didn't want to write gene, I wanted to write dad. All right, so the mom, in either case, is either going to contribute this big B brown allele from one of the homologous chromosomes, or on the other homologous, well, they have the same allele, so it's going to she's going to contribute that one to, to her child. The dad could contribute this one, that big brown eyed, uh, big uh, the the capital B allele for brown eyes, or the lowercase b for blue eyes. Either one. So the different combinations that might happen: an offspring could get both of these brown alleles from one copy from both parents. This could also happen, where you get this brown allele from the dad, and then the other brown allele from the mom. Or you could get a brown allele from the mom and a blue-eyed allele from uh, uh, allele from the dad. Or you could get the other brown-eyed allele from the mom. Right? These are when the mom has this, she has two chromosomes, homologous chromosomes. Each of them have the same brown allele on them. They both have that same brown allele. So I could get the other one from my mom and still get this blue-eyed allele from my dad. So if you said, what's the probability of having a blue-eyed child? Assuming that blue eyes are recessive, and remember this is a phenotype, these particular combinations are genotypes. Well, in order to have blue eyes, you have to be homozygous recessive. You have to have two lowercase b's. So what's the probability of having this? Well, there are no combinations that result in that, so there's a 0% probability of having two blue-eyed children. What's the probability of having a, uh, a, a homo, let me, a homozygous dominant child? Let me write that. Homozygous, zygous, dominant. And now we're looking at the genotype. We care about the specific alleles that that child inherits. Well, which of these are homozygous dominant? Well, you have this one right here, and you have that one right there. And so two of the four equally likely combinations are homozygous dominant. So you have a 50 percent shot. And we can do these Punnett squares. They don't even have to be for situations that where one trait is necessarily dominant on the other. For example, you could have the situation, it's called incomplete dominance. So incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance. 
let's say you have two traits for color in, I don't know, a flower. You can have you could have red flowers, or you could have white flowers, or you could have white flowers. And let's say I were to cross a a a parent flower where that has the genotype capital R. Well, I'll just make it in a capital W. So that could be the mom or the dad. Or the analogy breaks down a little bit with parents, although there is a male and a female, although sometimes on the same plant. And let's say the other plant is also a red and a white. So the other plant has a red allele and also has a white allele. So what are the different possibilities? Well, we just draw our Punnett square again. Let me draw our little grid. So the child could inherit both of these red alleles, could inherit this white allele and then this red allele, so this red one and then this white one. Right, that's that right there, and that red one is that right there. Or could inherit this red one from, let's say this is the mom plant, and then the white allele from the dad plant. So that's that one right there. Or you could in inherit both white alleles. Now what I said when I went into this, and I wrote it at the top right here, is we're studying a situation dealing with incomplete dominance. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you might actually have mixing or blending blending of the traits when you actually look at them. So if this was complete dominance, if red was dominant to white, then you say, OK, all of these guys are going to be red, and all of, and these guy, only this guy right here is going to be white. So you have a 1 in 4 probability of being white. But let's say that a, a, hetero, a heterozygous genotype, so let's, let me write that down. Let's say, if I, let's say that R, when you have one R allele and one white allele, that this doesn't result in red. This results in pink. This results in pink. So this is what blending is. It, it's kind of a mixture of the two. So if I said if these two people were to, these two plants were to reproduce, and the traits for uh, red and white petals, I guess we could say, are incomplete dominant or, or incompletely dominant, or they blend, and if I were to say, what's the, you know, what, what's the probability of having a pink plant, and now when I'm talking about pink, this of course is a phenotype. So the probability of pink, well, let's look at the different combinations. How many of these are pink? This one is pink, and this is pink. So two are pink of a total of four equally likely combinations. So it's a 50% chance, it's a 50% chance that we're pink. And then we could keep doing this over multiple generations and say, oh, what happens in the second, and the third, and the fourth generation? Actually, we could even have a situation where we have multiple different alleles. And I'll use the, you know, almost a kind of a, a more realistic example. I'll use blood types as an example. So there are three potential alleles for blood type. Three potential alleles. You could have a blood type A, you could have a blood, a blood type B, or you could have a blood type O. Or you could have a blood type O. And what happens is you have a combination here between codominance and recessive genes. And I'm going to show you what I talk about when we, when we do the Punnett squares. Maybe I'll stick to one color here, because I think you're getting the idea. So let's say I have a parent who is AB. So that means that they have, one, on one of their homologous chromosomes, they have the A allele. And on the other one, they have the B allele. That's what AB means. So the phenotype is the genotype. They're codominant. They both express themselves. They don't necessarily blend. They both express. That's an AB blood type. So this is, let me write this right here. This is AB blood type. Blood type. And then the other parent, let's say the other parent is, uh, let's, say, let's say that they are, they are fully an A blood type. Let's say they're an A blood type. Let's say their phenotype is an A blood type. I hope I'm not confusing you. But their genotype is that they have one allele that's an A and their other allele that's an O. So this is what's interesting about blood types. It's a mixture. O is recessive. O is recessive, while these guys are co-dominant. So if you have either of these guys with an O, these guys dominate. If you have them together, then your blood type is AB. So what are all the different combinations for these, for this this couple here? 
for this couple right here. Well, you could get it this A and that A. So you get an A from your mom, and you get an A from your dad right there. And if clearly in this case, you'll have your phenotype. You have an A blood type in this situation. You could get the A from your dad, and you could get the B from your mom, in which case you have an AB blood type. You could get the A from your mom and the O from your dad, in which case you have an A blood type, because this dominates that. Or you could get the B from your, let me, I don't want to introduce arbitrary colors. You could get the B from your mom, let me write this way, B from your mom, that's this one, or the O from your dad. And this, no, once again, I introduced a different color. And this is a B blood type. So if I said, what's the probability, what's the probability of having an A, A blood, blood type? Well, and once again, we're talking about a phenotype here. So which of these are an A blood type? Well, this one definitely is, because it's AA. If you have two A alleles, you definitely have an A blood type. But you also have an A blood type phenotype if you have an A and then an O. O is recessive. So this is also going to be an A blood type. So AO, these are both A blood. A blood. So there's a 50% chance, because two of the four combinations show us uh, an A blood type. And you could do all of the different combinations. And you say, well, how do you have an O blood type? Well, at, at least both of, you, both of your parents will have to carry at least one O. So for example, to have a to have an A, you know, that would have been possible if maybe instead of an AB, this right here was a O. Then this combination would have been a two O's right there. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how a Punnett square can be useful, and it can even be useful when we're when we're talking about more than one trait. So let's go to our situation that I talked about before, where I said, you know, you have little b is equal to blue eyes, and we're assuming that that's recessive. And you have big B is equal to brown eyes. Brown eyes. And we're assuming that this is dominant. Dominant. And let's say we have another trait. Another trait. We call it, well, I, I introduced that tooth trait in the, before. So let's say little t is equal to small teeth. Small teeth. I don't know what type of bizarre organism I'm talking about, although I think I would fall into the big tooth camp. And let's say big T is equal to big teeth. Big teeth. So an individual can have, for example, I might be, I might have, I might be heterozygous brown eyes. So my genotype might be heterozygous for brown eyes. And then homozygous dominant for teeth. So this might be my genotype. This and the phenotype for this one would be a big toothed brown-eyed person, right? Big, let me make that clear. This is big tooth phenotype, big tooth. And this is the phenotype. What you see is brown eyes, a big tooth brown-eyed person. Now, if we assume that the, the genes that code for teeth or eye color are on different chromosomes, and this is a key assumption, we can say that they, they assort independently. Let me write that down. Independent assortment. Independent assortment. Assortment. I shouldn't have. Assortment. So this is a case where if I were to look into uh, my look at my chromosomes, let's say this is one homologous pair. Maybe we call this homologous pair one. And let's say I have another homologous pair. And obviously, we have 23 of these. But let's say that this is homologous pair 2 right here. If eye color is, the eye color gene is, let me pick a, is here and here. Remember, the both homologous chromosomes code for the same genes. They might have different versions. Those are alleles. And if teeth are over here, so if teeth are over here, they will assort independently. So when, when after meiosis occurs to produce the gametes, the offspring might get this chromosome or copy of that chromosome for eye color and might get this a copy of this chromosome for 
for teeth size or tooth size. Or it could go the other way. Maybe it's another offspring gets this one and this chromosome for eye color, and then this chromosome for teeth color, and gets the other version of the allele. So because they're on different chromosomes, you can there the, there's no linkage between whether if you inherit this one, whether you inherit big teeth, whether you're going to inherit small uh, uh, brown eyes or blue eyes. Now if they were on the same chromosome, let's say the situation where they are on the same chromosome. So let's say, let's say, let me pick another trait, um, hair color, hair color. Let's say the gene for hair color is on chromosome 1. So let's say hair color, the gene is there and there. These might be different versions of hair color, different alleles, but the genes are on that same chromosome. In this situation, if someone gets, let's say, let's say this is if this is blue eyes here and this is blonde hair, then these are going to always travel together. You're not going to have these assort independently and these are called linked traits. Let me highlight that. So these are these right there, those are linked traits. But for a second, and we'll talk more about linked traits, and especially sex linked traits in the in probably the next video or a few videos from now. But let's assume that we're talking about traits that assort independently. And we cross two hybrids. So this is called a dihybrid cross, very fancy word, but it's just it gives you an idea of the power of the Punnett square. So let's say w both parents are so they're both hybrids, hybrids, which means that they both have, they both have the dominant brown eye allele, and they have the recessive blue eye allele, and they both have the dominant big tooth gene, and they both have the recessive little tooth gene. So this is the genotype for both parents. Both parents are dihybrids. They're hybrids for both genes, both parents. What are all the different combinations for their children? And they, you know, I could have done this without dihybrids. I could have made one of them uh, uh, homozygous for one of the traits and a hybrid for the other, and I could have done every different combination. But I'll do the dihybrid because it leads to a lot of var variety, and you'll often see this in in classes. So, if I'm talking about the mom, so the mom. What are the different combinations of genes that the mom can contribute? Well, the mom could contribute the brown. So for, for each of these traits, she can only contribute one of the alleles. So she could contribute this brown right here, and then the big yellow T. So this is one combination. Or she could contribute the big brown, and then the little yellow T. Or she can contribute the blue eye allele and the big T. So these are all the different combinations that she could contribute. And then the final combination is this allele and that allele. So the blue eyes, the blue eyes, and the small teeth. So that's for mom. And of course, dad could contribute the same different combinations because dad has the same genotype. So let me write that down. So. Brown eye, let me just write it like this so I don't have to keep switching colors. Actually, I want to make them a little closer together because I'm going to run out of space otherwise. Nope. Let me do it like that. OK. Brown eye. So the dad could contribute the big, the big teeth or the little teeth along with the brown eye gene, or if he could contribute the blue eye gene or the blue eyed allele and in combination with the big teeth or the yellow teeth. <laughs> Not the yellow teeth, the little teeth. That would be a different gene for yellow teeth, or maybe that's an environmental factor. So these are all the different combinations that can occur for their offspring. So let's draw, call this a, maybe a super Punnett square, because we're now dealing with a set of four combinations. We have 16 combinations. 16 combinations. Looks like I ran out of ink right there. Let me write that. It's It's strange why. 16 combinations. Let me write that out. Right, so this, something's wrong with my tablet. Maybe there's something weird. OK. So there's 16 different combinations. And let, let's write them all out. And I'll just stay in one maybe neutral color so I don't have to keep switching. I could get this combination. So this big, blue, big <laughs> brown eyes from my mom, brown eyes from my dad allele. So it's brown, brown, and then big teeth from both. I could have this combination. So I have 
capital B and a capital B. And then I have a capital T and a lowercase t. And then I, let's just keep moving forward. So I could get a capital B and a lowercase b with a capital T and a capital T, a big B, lowercase b, capital T, lowercase t. And I'm just going to go through these super fast because it's going to take forever. So capital B from here, capital B from there, capital T, lowercase t from here, capital B from each, and then lowercase t from each. You have a capital B, and then a lowercase b from that one, and then a capital T from the mom, lowercase t from the dad. I think hopefully you're not getting too tired here. And so then you have a capital B from your dad, and then a lowercase b from your mom, two lowercase t's. Actually, let me just pause and fill these in, because I don't want to waste your time. There, I've saved you some time, and I've filled in every combination, similar to what happens on many cooking shows. But now that I've filled in all the different combinations, we can talk a little bit about the different phenotypes that might be expressed from this dihybrid cross. For example, how many of these are going to exhibit uh, brown eyes and big teeth? So big teeth, brown eyed kids. Big teeth, big teeth. Let me write this down here. So if I want big teeth big teeth and brown eyes brown eyes oh so my pen doesn't brown eyes so how many are there big teeth and brown eyes so we have to just they're, they're both r the dominant so if you have either a capital b or a capital t in any of them you're going to have big teeth and brown eyes so this is big teeth and brown eyes this big teeth right here brown eyes there big teeth or maybe I should say brown eyes and big teeth, because that's the order that I wrote it right here. Brown eyes and big teeth, brown eyes and big teeth. Even though I have a recessive trait here, the brown eyes dominate. And I had a small teeth here, but the big teeth dominate. This is brown eyes and big teeth. This is brown eyes and big teeth. Let's see. This is brown eyes and big teeth, brown eyes and big teeth. And let me see if I, is that all of them? Well, no. Well, this is brown eyes, little teeth. This is brown eyes and big teeth right there. And this is also brown eyes and big teeth. They're heterozygotes for each trait, but both brown eyes and big teeth are, are dominant. So these are all phenotypes of brown eyes and big teeth. So how many of those do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those. So we have nine. Nine brown eyes and big teeth. Now, how many do we have of big teeth? So let me write big, or let me write a different color. So let me write brown eyes, brown eyes, and little teeth, little teeth. Something in my pen tablet doesn't work quite right over there. So brown eyes and little teeth. So see, this is brown eyes and little teeth right there. This is brown eyes and little teeth right there. This is brown eyes and little teeth right there. So there's three combinations of brown eyes and little teeth. Three, and if I were to say blue eyes, blue eyes, blue and big teeth, big teeth. What are the combinations there? Well, this is blue eyes and big teeth, blue eyes and big teeth, blue eyes and big teeth. So there's three combinations there. And then if I want to be recessive on both traits, so if I want, let me do this. I'm gonna. I want blue eyes, blue and little teeth, little teeth. There's only one. I have to, there, out of the 16, there's only one situation where I inherit the a recessive trait uh, from both parents for both traits. So if you look at this and you say, hey, what's the probability? So there's only one of that. What's the probability of having a big teeth, brown eyed child? And these are all the phenotypes. There are 16 different possibilities here, right? There are 16 squares here. Nine of them describe the phenotype of big teeth and brown eyes. So there's a 9 16th chance. So it's 9 out of 16 chance of having a big teeth, brown eyed child. What's the probability of a blue eyed uh, child with little teeth? 1 in 16. 1 in 16. So hopefully in this video you've uh, appreciated the power of the Punnett square, that it's a useful way to explore every different combination of all of the genes. It doesn't have to be only one trait. It can be in this case where you're doing two traits that express, that show dominance, but they uh, sort independently because they're on different chromosomes. 
You could use it, uh, where, did, where did I do it over here? You could use it to explore incomplete dominance when there's blending, where red and white made pink genes. Or you could even use it when there's co-dominance and when you have multiple alleles, where it's not just two different uh, versions of the gene. There's actually three different versions. So hopefully you've enjoyed that.